Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam. I'm a board certified facial plastic surgeon. I specialize in facial rejuvenation and helping people look as young as they feel. And today's topic is a very, very important one. And that is sunblock. You know, at the foundation of anti-aging for the skin comes sun protection and a lot of other lifestyle things which we'll touch on in a moment. But it's a very confusing topic because if you go into a grocery store, if you go into any other uh, cosmetics store, you see tons and tons of different choices with all different types of uh, ingredients and, and claims. And I wanna help simplify all that and make it very easy for you to understand what you should be applying to your skin on a regular basis to protect it from the sun. So without further ado, let's jump into the topic. So when it comes to skin aging, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, there's some things that you can do to help prevent the aging process of the skin and other things that are just part of your genetics and just part of the biology of the skin. So let's talk very briefly about those things that you can actually uh, help prevent. So number one comes lifestyle. And under lifestyle comes things like not drinking too much, definitely not smoking. Smoking is one of the greatest accelerators of, uh, of skin loss of elasticity and loss of collagen. You see those patients who've smoked their whole life and their skin is hyper wrinkled and, and really old looking. That's a, that's a known fact for us. Um, then other things like drinking lots of water, decreasing stress, you know, just having a good healthy lifestyle, eating the right types of foods, etc. Antioxidants, and those type of things. Then there's another really important part that I put up in the same category as, as uh, smoking, and that is the amount of sun that your skin sees. And obviously for every single person, there's a different type of, of response that the skin gives of sun. There's people who have a little bit more melanin in their skin, like myself, who have a little bit more protection when it comes to sun exposure, but even, even people who have that extra melanin are still gonna see an acceleration of the uh, skin aging process as a result of sun exposure. And then on the other extreme, you have people from Northern European um, descent and other uh, patients with light eyes and light um, uh, skin who get, you know, their skin is gonna see much more accelerated aging with sun exposure. So for, you know, to make a generalized and very blanket sort of statement, sun exposure when it comes to skin aging, uh, specifically the face, is a big no-no. Now, let me put a caveat here. The sun is important for us. It gives us vitamin D. It's also great for stress relief and all those other uh, things, but there's only so much that you need. Plus, you can get it on your body in, in those type of amounts, but really try to protect your face as much as possible. And uh, let's, let's uh, dive in a little bit more into um, what makes the sun so bad for the skin. Now, before we go into the anti-aging piece, I also wanna put another caveat there. Let's not forget about the other effect the sun has on our, on our skin, and that's the in, increased production of skin cancers, right? I mean, we, we're all thinking cosmetic and anti-aging, but skin cancers are on the rise. You know, the changes in the ozone and, and uh, all those other things that are affecting the amount of exposure of UV lights that the skin gets, we're seeing a higher range of, of uh, basal cells, squamous cell carcinomas, and even melanomas. And specifically in certain parts of the world, those are even higher. In fact, Australia, for example, with a relatively uh, defective uh, ozone layer, you're seeing a massive increase in those types of cancers in those specific areas. So we know it's a real thing. And let's, let's dissect for a moment what is the sun's direct effect on those. So the sun emits UVA, UVB, and UVC. And let's focus for a moment on UVA and UVB. So UVB light is what gives the skin the burnt effect. So when you get a sunburn, your skin is getting exposed to UVB light and you get that reddish discoloring and if you get too much of it, your skin starts to peel off, etc. That is what's predisposing you to skin cancers. Right, so the burning effect of the skin, the changes in the DNA structure during the healing, the emission of all the free radicals, etc., that happens, uh, gives the skin the uh, future opportunity to have a higher level of skin cancer. So think UVB, think sunburns, you know, B for sunburns, and also skin cancers. UVA light, um, this is these are all ultraviolet, uh, you know, in the ultraviolet spectrum. UVA that is what accelerates the breakdown of collagen and elasticity in the skin. So remember what gives the skin the integrity, the stretchability, the elasticity, and gives the skin that youthful, supple look is the, the production of collagen woven into the skin as well as the elasticity of the skin. So when you pull the skin, it bounces back. And what happens when you get exposure to a lot of UVA light over time, 
you start to see a breakdown, an accelerated breakdown of the collagen production, collagen portion of the skin, as well as loss of elasticity. So what ends up happening is skin becomes more wrinkled, it becomes more thin, and loses that pliability and that brilliance that you see um, with age. Then the other component of it is, uh, in addition to the integrity of the skin, you also see an increased pigmentation um, in the skin. So you start to see brown pigments coming to the surface and that is known as hyperpigmentation. Um, that's the little uh, clumps of melanin that are produced to try to protect the skin, but over time they just start to uh, form little islands of, of clusters of, of melanin and you start to see these, these pigments uh, forming and blotchiness of the skin. And in some patients you see a breakdown of the small capillaries and that is the red um, pigment that you see in, in skin that's aged. So reds and browns are also an effect that happens as a result of, of sun exposure. So what you wanna do if you're trying to um, prevent your skin from aging is you wanna block the UVA and UVB from hitting the skin. Now, there are certain types of, of uh, uh, sunblocks that have an uh, SPF factor. SPF primarily speaks mostly to the UVB protection, and it, it helps block a lot of the, the portion of, this, of the uh, sun that causes the, uh, um, you know, the um, sunburns and skin cancers, which obviously is very important. But I think really if we're gonna apply something to our skin, and if we're mindful in wanting to decrease the, the rate of aging, we want something that has UVA protection and UVB protection. We want to have protection on both. So the only way to really get protection on both of those is to apply a physical blocker. So what a physical blocker is in the, in the world of, of uh, sunblocks comes down to zinc or titanium oxide. You'll see that as one of the ingredients at the back of uh, the bottles. And what you're looking for is a zinc or titanium oxide level of greater than around six to eight percent. The average uh, sun, good sunblock is probably in the eight to nine percent range. And what you're gonna get with that is you're gonna get a physical layer that keeps the sun from ever even getting to the skin. It's almost like being indoors, really, at the end of the day. And that's a very, very important um, component to it. And what you're looking for on the label of your sunscreen bottle is you want it to say broad spectrum. And broad spectrum is basically saying it blocks the entire spectrum of UVA, from UVA, UVA light, UVB light, and even UVC light is getting some blockade from a physical blocker. So look for broad spectrum, then flip it over and make sure that the titanium and the zinc, zinc oxide levels are greater than six to eight percent. Then you know you've got a pretty good um, you know, start on a sun, a sun block. The second aspect of it is you want it to be waterproof as well. Because remember, if you're, if you're out and about, you're sweating, depending on the climate you're in, you're getting um, humidity and you're in you know, sweat and perspirating, well, a lot of that sunscreen is gonna wear right off, and then you're gonna be stuck with basically being unprotected. So having something that's waterproof is helpful, especially if you have an active lifestyle or if you're gonna be using this around um, sports. The other component of it is you want to make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing to put on because if you know most of us are, are a little too vain to put something that that has like a white uh, sheen to it and that's what you get with a lot of these physical blockers they have like a white look to them and you see that with with you know people who put zinc on their nose for example it's like a it literally looks like a they put chalk on their nose but a lot of these more sophisticated sunscreens have tinted quality to them they've added a little bit of tint and they're different tints for different types of skin um, and the sheen that it puts on, you don't look like you're wearing anything. And if you have the components where it's cosmetically appropriate, tinted, has a, has a low sheen and, and uh, invisible basically, and it has a physical blockade of UVA, UVB, and broad spectrum, you're in great shape. Now the other component is make sure you reapply every several hours because a lot of people put it on one time and it's best to start off your day with, with sunscreen, even if you're gonna be working, you're by windows, etc. You wanna start your day off with uh, the application of a sunscreen, but then reapply it throughout the day as you go on. Um, and especially if you're spending the day outside on weekends and in the summer, etc. So I think those uh, basic uh, components, if you, if you apply them, um, broad spectrum, cosmetically appealing, 
and uh, waterproof, you're gonna be really, really in good shape and much, much further ahead of the ability to protect your skin against sun cans, sun, uh, skin cancers as well as accelerated skin aging. I hope that helped uh, navigate a little bit of this confusing topic and uh, next time you're in a store, you can prepare instead of just looking for something with the highest SPF level, you're gonna know what to look for. Thanks so much and make sure you, if you have any questions, um, you know, comment below. Um, if you haven't already, Subscribe to my channel, which I will be presenting a lot of hopefully uh, very useful information for you um, and share this with friends and family to help them uh, get on the, the right products as well. And, uh, and, and if you enjoyed this video, please like it and comment. Thanks so much, Dr. Mir Karam. <music>